Welcome to another edition of Ormec. We've got one here. Timing is definitely not right. And that is not a water feature, unfortunately. That is a severe leak from a fuel injector without the ignition on. So it's a mega leak. Hydro lock anybody? We'll see. Definitely slipped. So this will be a good job to get back to, won't it? We'll enjoy this one, hopefully. Well, you know what they say, white smoke in the morning is a shepherd's warning. Well, not so much in this case, but there you are, you get the idea. This is obviously overfueling and it's been sat there all night, hence the billowy smoke. In the workshop now, a little bit warmer, but you still got the same problem, black smoke, it's overfueling. We'll concentrate on that a bit later, let's look at the timing issue first. a bit of a surprise I had the phase wheels all lined up there and I thought everything was tickety-boo as you can see perfect no issue bolt holes line up we've got no issues at all but then I decided to have a bit of a further look at the camshaft positions and well things weren't quite so perfect as I'd hoped really to be honest with you and obviously something catastrophic had happened and we needed to then get the locking tool on the back of the camshafts and just confirm the angles of the camshafts target now sure Vanos is locked in it. Yeah. Why the hell's it bloody uh, out so far? Is the bolt big bolt can't have spun because it's it would have knocked the phase wheel out, wouldn't it? So phase wheels line up, but the camshaft is a backyard out. I mean, it's really spun round because actually, let's just try the intake. I think the intake should be all right. Yeah, everything's all right. Look. Yeah. So we need to look at the uh, crankshaft timing next. Well, I did say don't get too excited, and I never do. Very unusual this, usually when the phase wheels line up, everything else lines up. In this case, exhaust lines up, there's no gap on the cylinder head, the bolts are in, everything's flat, everything's tight, everything's square. However, when we go to the intake on this side, as you can see, bolt holes are miles out, they're something like 10 millimeters out, which means the angle of the camshaft is too far to the right. So it would need to be brought more to the left to line up with the bolt holes as you can see it's not flat it's like on a weird angle i don't know how many degrees but it's you know certainly quite a few degrees off so the camshafts aren't lined up but the phase wheels line up very very strange indeed so something very catastrophic has occurred no doubt the fuel injector leak on number one and number two cylinders have obviously in my opinion spun the crank and we'll probably investigate that a little later on but for now, let's try and have a look and see if we can find the TDC mark on the crankshaft. Well, no surprises to see that there was no oil where there was supposed to be a hole, basically. So what do we believe? Is the cam timing right or is the crank timing right? Well, basically, we would have to check the dwell period of the piston at top dead centre. But we'll go into that a little bit, a bit later on. There's the hole. And obviously, if we ro rotate the crankshaft a few degrees it turned out to be about five degrees actually we would get the hole to line up so it was about five degrees off where it needed to be and we'll take a good look at that shortly and it's a bit of a weird one this really because when the phase wheels line up usually you just throw your lock into and you think ah oh, that's great and you just have a quick check on your crankshaft because it's under the car but we'll see shortly that all was kind of not well really and it turned out that the crank timing was actually quite okay in essence, but the valve timing in relation to the crank timing wasn't correct, and also in relation to each other, the valve timing, they weren't correct, although the phase wheels were correct. Very, very strange. Let's take a look at the scope trace anyway. So this is the engine what we're working on. The biggest problem I have when I do this is I can't find another scope trace anywhere online for an N43. I just can't find one. 
and even my own personal files. I can't find one for N43. However, the customers give us the go-ahead to actually repair this. It's actually worth more than the vehicle. So on part two of the video, or possibly part three, I will show the end result and we'll count the teeth. And all I've got at the moment is a B38. It's three-cylinder, but it's very similar. And you can see, if you want to pause the video and count the teeth from those reference points, the TDC marks, there is a difference. I think ours is six and that was something like four. So that would correspond to being sort of the five degrees off in relation to the valve timing. So it's really all interesting stuff. But we'll look at that again in part two when we have like an accurate scope trace when I know the engine works and it runs and it's timed up bang on 100%. And after that, we'll compare it again in part two against this scope trace and against the other one. Because all they had was a B38 and it's not the same engine, is it? Although it looks very similar. So that'll be interesting to see in the second video, absolutely for sure. Let's take a look at what I did now. I moved away from the valve time and I needed to determine the TDC position. So I whacked in the old test long. We've got a three meter, bit fatter, but it's still pretty good. Three meter fiber optic cable. I whacked that in, wedged it in a bit, dropped the car down. And I managed to bring it up into the engine bay. And then I put on a nice protractor. I have a lovely uh, Starwelly steel protractor. I zeroed it, and then, as you could see, I brought it round, managed to get to TDC, and I noticed the cam timing was five degrees off in that sense. Of course, now the crank timing is where it needs to be, and the piston was pretty much at TDC, as you could see. Then, obviously, our phase wheels don't line up anymore, so the timing is definitely out. We don't really know what's happened. I presume the fuel has spun something. The leaking fuel and the piston velocity has spun something. So, I can't wait. I'm going to start this in one week's time and replace everything and that'll be great. Well, I thought I'd save the best till last and here we are. We have the exhaust valves open there and our extractor is pulling the fuel vapour through. Now listen, this car had no key in the ignition at all and that is just dumping fuel while the engine switched off and the car's locked in essence. So it's quite catastrophic. I hope you enjoyed that. Please tune in for part two. Switch on your notifications so you don't, that you don't miss part two. If you've not subscribed yet, please subscribe and help the channel grow. It's going quite well at the moment. And let's try and get to 10,000 subscribers by summer. Thanks for watching and see you again.